How is the bank then looking at how to bring in the private sector in a different way? What types of conversations are you having with them about the types of incentives or financial products that they need to be able to get into these investments? And how do we sort of find a way to make this whole concept of blended finance sort of push forward in the smartest way that doesn't crowd out you know, commercial investments, that makes sure you're sort of playing in this space where the development banks and the development finance institutions can have the most impact? Well, we are a special case because uh, when we were founded 60 years ago in the Treaties of Rome, the founding documents of the European Union, as we call it now, uh, we were from the beginning a crowding in bank. The idea was always to finance long-term investment projects at that time mainly infrastructure, nowadays innovation, SME financing, renewable energies, energy efficiency and things like that. Um, but by mobilizing the private sector for it. We presently have a lending volume every year of roughly 90 billion dollars. And with that we trigger an overall investment happening through the inclusion of the private sector of roughly 300 billion dollars. Uh, so this is quite significant. So we are used to multiplying scarce uh, pr uh, public resources. Sources. And uh, this is uh, quite amazing because uh, the European Union's bank is not funded by the member states or the European Union. It's funded by m money we get from the capital markets. So we, we, need, we are the biggest lender worldwide as a multilateral institution. But we are unfortunately also the biggest borrower because we need to the capital markets to borrow 60 to 90 billion euros per year. This works only if your projects are clean, are sustainable, are economically viable and bring about a return on investment. Projects in the developing world not necessarily always bring a good return on investment that would be attractive for private contributors. So we need to apply instruments that we also use within the European Union and there we do 90% of our business. Mm -hmm. Because there sometimes we have a public goal or want to produce a public good which in order to make it bankable or marketable, you need to, let's say, absorb the first part of a potential loss in the form of some risk sharing scheme or so. This is exactly what I believe we must do more in development because uh, I don't believe in the, in the multiplication of public budget funds for development. We'll have to do more with not less, but not much more. And so I guess the question is, given your history and experience sort of doing this crowding in, how do you get other institutions to do more of this, to do it better, to sort of understand based on, you know, what you've learned through doing this, um, how, to, how to do more of it? Because I think in some cases it can be complex or there's hesitance or there's a fear of, you know, taking on excess risk. I think basically the, the colleagues in the other institutions are trying to do similar things maybe now more than in the past. Um, and if I look, for instance, at the new institutions, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank or the New Development Bank, I mean, they are clearly on the same track as we are. So they are bringing more life into the business, I would say. Um, this is, this is uh, working everywhere. But still, I'm, of course, completely aware, even within the European Union, among, in member states of the European Union, that financial instruments, even if they are responsibly structured trigger, if not resentment, then at least skepticism, whether it's really a good, reliable, sustainable instrument. And therefore we have to convince our investors that we have the necessary technical, the engineering capacity and the f financial capability to make sure that we make offers to the investors that the the projects we want to see financed are solid, sustainable, and that requires in particular more standardization of, of projects and an enhanced uh, due diligence on a high level. We need to go for the highest standards, not for the lowest. If I want to get a private sector investor in, then I must make sure that we apply the highest technical and financial standards beyond the social and environmental standards and in sustainability standards that must be uh, put into the focus always. Mm -hmm. And if we have to, to make a risk sharing agreement, that's fine. This all can be done 
within the rules of a market economy.